Former NATO commander General Ben Hodges said that he does not rule out war with Russia in a few years. However, a conflict cannot be ruled out and its probability largely depends on us. Firstly, on preparation, because preparing for such a conflict is absolutely correct. This is the basis of effective deterrence. We must be able to show. Secondly, support for Ukraine is also extremely important. As long as we do not allow Ukraine to fall, we will not have to expect a war with Russia, he stated. When asked how the election of a new president in the US might affect Europe, he said Kamala Harris was the best option. It is true that Trump cannot withdraw from NATO because the administration has already taken steps to protect itself from that option. But Trump can take other actions. Kamala Harris is a guarantee of aid to Ukraine and of NATO stability. He was also asked whether Europe would be able to defend itself against Russia without the help of the United States. Of course, just look at the basic statistics on economic and demographic potential. The European NATO countries are many times larger than Russia. The potential here is definitely huge. However, to use it effectively, you need will. And that is the problem, because so far, I do not see a strong enough will in Europe. To create it, we need responsible and strong leaders who can convince societies to unite and understand what a threat Russia represents, he answered. According to the general, while Ukraine is defending itself, Russia has no chance of gathering forces to attack a NATO country. Ukraine has been at war with Russia for 10 years, since it started in 2014. The Russians had many advantages over Ukraine. They used everything they could, and we are in a situation where they can control only about 20% of its territory. They have suffered huge human and technical losses, and their economy functions only thanks to the support of China and India, which buy Russian raw materials. If the West had supported Ukraine in full force, this war would have ended last year. We could have seriously supported Ukraine so that it would win, and not like now, just so that it does not lose, he answered. Hurricane Rafael made landfall in Cuba on Wednesday as a powerful Category 3 hurricane shortly after powerful winds knocked out the country's power grid. Forecasters warned the could bring life-threatening storm surges, winds and flash floods to western swaths of the island. By mid-afternoon on Wednesday the Union Electrica announced the collapse of electricity in the whole country. The second total blackout in one month. School and public transportation have been suspended as civil defense issued an alert. In Havana's capital, the streets were deserted and being battered by strong wind and rain. It is another blow for Cuba, which is facing the aftermath of another hurricane that passed through two weeks ago and left at least eight dead in the eastern part of the island. Thousands of people were evacuated between Tuesday and Wednesday in western provinces for residing in low-lying or dangerous areas. Public transportation and classes and many work activities were suspended in the capital, Havana, and several provinces. Crews collected garbage and other obstructive materials from the Malacan and several low-lying areas, as floods were forecasted. At the same time, roofs, windows, boats, and any property that could be affected were secured. Throughout the day heavy downpours began to fall and the wind whipped trees. The authorities also cancelled flights in the main air terminals, such as Havana and Veradero. Hurricane Rafael arrived in Cuba under complex circumstances. It brought significant rainfall to the east last week, particularly in Guantanamo, where the previous cyclone, Oscar, made landfall on October 20. Oscar left eight people dead and affected more than 150,000 people, destroying roads, bridges, and houses. It also damaged coffee crops, which are among the most important in the region.
Some Italians and tourists on the streets of Rome had mixed reactions to the victory of Donald Trump in the U.S. presidential election on Wednesday. Standing outside a newsstand in the Italian capital, Ricardo Savoia said he saw Trump's surprisingly decisive win as a victory for the common people. I think that Trump's victory could have positive effects on the whole world, for example on the conflict in Ukraine and the one in Israel, he told the Associated Press. In Rome, another man who gave his name only as Fernando, appeared deeply concerned with Trump's win. I'm disappointed, what else can I say? Really, it is crazy and dangerous. Italian Premier Giorgia Meloni congratulated Trump on the win. Italy and the United States are sister nations, linked by an unshakable alliance, common values and a historic friendship. It is a strategic bond, which I am sure we will now strengthen even more, Maloney said. Vince Donald Trump, è lui il 47esimo presidente degli Stati Uniti. Abbiamo fatto la storia. Chiuderemo i confini ai migranti irregolari, dice poi il bacio alla moglie.